Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So we've covered some edge AI device topics here before. We've covered uh, the new iPhone and the new Apple Watch, both of which have uh, neural cores. Now, technically speaking, you don't actually always need a neural compute engine or a dedicated processor to do AI things. We've already seen LLMs run on the Raspberry Pi, and with the release of the Raspberry Pi version 5, which is almost twice as fast and boasting four times as much RAM, there is even more we can do, and someone has already shown us what that is. So a developer today released a version of Stable Diffusion XL that actually can run with only 300 megabytes of RAM. This unlocks new capabilities for Edge AI. Of course, we've seen LLMs run on the Raspberry Pi before, but it was pretty slow. So let's get into it. So if you want to watch a great video going over some of the incredible improvements that have been made by the Raspberry Pi Foundation with the version 5 release of the Raspberry Pi, I recommend checking out this video made by Jeff Geerling. His entire channel is all about Raspberry Pi compute projects, and he's done some pretty wild things. He's even plugged in GPUs to Raspberry Pis. So I've linked his channel up above. Definitely check that out. This new project that lets you run Stable Diffusion XL on a Raspberry Pi is called ONXX Stream. And this is partially because it uses some new approaches to running Stable Diffusion, which pretty much means that the interface you're using is in some ways streaming. So Onyx has actually been pivotal in the past when it came to making these models smaller and actually letting lesser hardware like than a GPU actually run them. And Onyx Stream is based on the idea of decoupling the inference engine from the component responsible of providing the model weights. This gets into a lot of kind of software terminology, but the idea is um, reducing how much of the model actually has to be sitting in RAM for whatever processor working on this has to fetch from. It's kind of a clever way to understand what it really needs to fetch. And it also means that you can actually run this on a CPU. And generally speaking, Onyx Stream can consume up to 55 times less memory during runtime while only being about 0.5 to 2x slower. And this is on CPU. Now, to be fair, there were actually Onyx forks of Stable Diffusion 1.5 that made this possible in July. However, the wildest thing with this, I would say, was that you could actually run this on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2. Granted, the image generation would take about two hours, but it was possible. And what's cool now is on the latest Raspberry Pi, the benefit is now you can basically run SDXL in real time. Now, and by real time, I mean you're going to be waiting around, you know, a minute to three minutes for an actual image to show up, but the improvement is actually crazy. And I think it's necessary to actually go over what Onyx is. So Onyx has actually been around for about six years, and I think my friends at Paperspace, I know the founders, um, I think they actually have a really great reason as to what, like why this is important and what it actually does. So Onyx, generally speaking, stands for the Open Neural Network Exchange Format. The idea is back in, you know, 2018, there were a ton of different formats, even within like the PyTorch uh, realm. And the idea here was to just create a standard for all deep learning models with some base runtime that actually made them portable and to try to prevent vendor lock-in. Uh, Cause obviously if this really hadn't been done as early as it was, it would have been really easy for Google or Amazon to come in and say, oh, like, why don't we just make our own format that you can only use on Google TPUs or only on GPUs on Amazon Cloud. And fortunately, we've avoided that. And I think Hugging Face and a lot of other platforms that have really worked hard on uh, even further formats like Checkpoint models and et cetera, they've also done a lot of work to make sure that a lot of important aspects of infrastructure for portable AI have remained open source. So going back to the SDXL tune, generally speaking, the minimum RAM required for even stable diffusion 1.5 is eight gigs. And this seems reasonable, but it's still kind of daunting for most uh, embedded compute uh, platforms, especially the Raspberry Pi. Now I know that the Raspberry Pi version five technically has a version that you can get eight gigs of RAM with, but it's not necessarily all usable because you still have to run you know, a Linux kernel. So generally, the major machine learning frameworks and libraries are focused on minimizing inference latency or maximizing throughput. And this comes at the cost of RAM. So Onyx Stream kind of takes this and says, well, what if we made it less fast, but able to run with less memory? So this is what was possible around July. A Stable Diffusion 1.5 could run on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2. And the key here is there were some precision losses. So um, this was running at half precision, which basically means that the resolution and the guesses it's making won't be quite as good, but reducing precision like this is quite common in a lot of uh, fine tunes that make these models smaller. So this is using the VAE decoder with basically, uh, yeah, with less precision. This is with slightly greater precision. So you can see that the image is just less 
muddy when you have a little bit greater precision. And that just is because it's creating better guesses and it understands a bit more of what it's making. This is another example of the lowest precision. So this actually isn't FP16. Now we move on to Stable Diffusion XL. And I should, I should note this is actually coming from the base model. So the on extreme Stable Diffusion example implementation now can support SDXL 1.0. Uh, granted, without the refiner. These Onyx files were exported from SDXL 1.0, pretty much came from Hugging Faces Diffusers library, uh, which I think they say here is version 019.3. SDXL is significantly more computational expensive than Stable Diffusion 1.5. The most significant difference is the ability to generate um, 1000 by 1000 pixel images instead of 512 by 512 pixel images. Uh, just to give you an idea, generating 10-step images with Hugging Faces diffusers takes about 26 minutes on a 12-core PC with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, and the minimum recorded VRAM for SDXL previously was right around 12 gigs. So if you had a GPU that had less than 12 gigs of memory, the odds this, this would be working are just very low. So on Extreme can run SDXL on less than 300 megs of RAM and this means you can run it on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2, and also means it can run a little bit faster, so meaningfully faster, on a Raspberry Pi V5 without adding more swap space and without writing anything to disk during inference. And basically that means it doesn't have to use more resources that the Linux kernel would normally use that you're running. Now generating 10-step images takes about 11 hours on a, on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2, and obviously it's a little bit faster on the latest version. And there have been some specific optimizations that have been made to make this possible. So the same set of optimizations that they made for Stable Diffusion 1.5 have been applied to SDXL 1.0, uh, but there are a few differences. So the UNET model, in order to make it run in less than 300 megs of RAM, required uh, basically UNET dynamic quant quantization, uh, but limited to a specific subset of large intermediate tensors. So it's pretty trimmed down, like just to put it that way. The situation for the VAE decoder is a bit more complex than for Stable Diffusion 1.5. Uh, in SDXL, the VAE decoder is about four times the size and consumes 4.4 gigs of RAM when run with on Extreme on FP32 precision. So obviously precision takes a bit of a hit here to make this work. In the case of SD 1.5, the VAE decoder is statically quantized with UNT8 precision. And this is enough to reduce RAM consumption to around 260 megabytes. Now, instead with SDXL, the VAE decoder overflows when you run it with FP16 arithmetic. And the numerical ranges of its activations are simply just, they're too large. So the real trade-off is that we're stuck with a model that consumes four gigs of RAM, but cannot be run in FP16 precision, which would normally be the trick we'd use to get that RAM use down. One solution to this problem, which hasn't actually been investigated yet, is just running the VAE decoder in FP16, and then you divide your total memory use by two. So then you'd be at two gigs of RAM usage instead of 4.4. Uh, now, ironically, both of these would still work on the um, latest version of the Raspberry Pi, but, but we're trying to maximize this, and the developer here was looking at the RPi02. Um, the inspiration for this solution came from uh, an implementation of the VAE decoder from Hugging Faces Diffusers library. So in other words, using tile decoding. And you can see in this image here, there are clearly tiles. So there are blocks of this work being done. So pretty much the idea is divide and conquer. It's a common CS concept. Um, so like why do it all at once when you can split it up into 16 distinct uh, work units? So the idea is pretty simple. The result of the diffusion process is a tensor with shape 1 for 128 by 128. The idea is to split the tensor into five by five regions. So either, yeah, 16 or 25 overlapping regions, and then decode those tensors separately. So basically you reduce the amount of work and therefore the amount of RAM that has to be used. Uh, so for example, the image here was generated by a tile decoder with blending manually turned off. So that's why you can actually see these um, transition points between each tile. Now, what I will say is when you make the same image with blending turned on, it looks entirely normal. It looks like something that would have come out of, you know, a run of the mill, um, Stable Diffusion XL output. Now, of course, this took uh, 11 hours on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2, but I've been told, and I'm, I'm gonna buy one of these and try this, but I've been told that it can take um, less than an hour on the Raspberry Pi version five. And there are also some really cool features of on Extreme if you're a developer. So I think you should definitely check this out if you're a developer in this space. The performance here is quite clear. So you can tell that based on how much RAM you have, things get a little bit better. So for instance, you can see here, in theory, this here would be possible on the latest version of the Raspberry Pi. So per iteration, you know, around seven seconds is pretty reasonable. Uh, and then 
it's cool to see attention slicing ending up in areas of application outside of just people who are working on GGML. Uh, this was initially an approach that was developed almost explicitly for use with Apple Silicon. And basically, it's another clever way of slicing what you actually need to infer against while you're producing images or producing text with an LLM. And I'm not going to get too far into these other um, applications. What's cool is you can run this on basically Linux, Mac, or Windows. I'd recommend doing it on Linux or Mac. I'm probably going to run this on my Mac just to try it out because it's kind of cool. And I'm still waiting on a Raspberry Pi version 5 that I ordered on Amazon a few days ago. So I'll load up some, some other images people have made with this. Um, I think it's really cool that this is all possible with just a Raspberry Pi and not even like one of those expensive um, embedded Jetson TK1s from NVIDIA. Those are really cool, but it's awesome to see that there's tooling that's let us kind of detach a little bit from only being able to run cool uh, AI or ML stuff on NVIDIA hardware. So um, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you learned something. Um, if you like our content, um, please like, subscribe, and share our videos. It means a ton to us. Uh, if you want to try Vast AI, check out our link in the description um, to try out renting a super fast NVIDIA GPU. And we'll see you in the next video.